Airbnb coming in hot. You can see shares of that stock up almost 12%. That's after they notched their best quarter on record. You can see, again, those shares are surging. They posted revenue of $2.24 billion for net income of $834 million. That beat expectations on both the top and bottom line. You can see the numbers there, again, handily beating the streets estimates of $2 billion on the top line at 77 cents on the bottom line. So let's chat a little bit more about this with Bernie McTernan. He's Needham and Company's managing director over there. Bernie, it's great to talk with you about this knockout quarter for Airbnb. You know, what was the big story for them uh, beyond obviously just the reopening of the global economy and people being able to travel? Yeah, no, so the, and thanks again for having me. So the big thing is that the broader tailwind that they're benefiting from is travel is changing. So, you know, in the Zoom environment, people are traveling more, longer stays. Those are all tailwinds at Airbnb's back. And so the on a more short-term basis, first demand is coming back, right? So we're seeing excluding APAC nights booked was up in the in North America, EMEA, um, and LADAM. Uh, gross booking values were also up over 2019 levels, helped by strong ADRs, and, and revenue beat expectations by 10%, as you showed before. And then importantly, supply is coming back with demand as well. So in LADAM, um, units or, or yeah, supply was up 25%. In North America, it was up 10%. In, um, in EMEA, it was up 9%. So it's following demand, but then also they're making improvements to their platform too. So the company um, last May, they they rolled out a hundred different upgrades to, that makes it easier for, to host. Um, there's another 50 upgrades coming shortly in, in November with their winter event. And then also their marketing campaign. Um, they, they're really trying to drive more people to um, really learn with the reopening um, and travel coming back, the, the benefits of hosting. And then lastly, uh, long-winded way of answering your question here, um, margins just continue to outperform expectations. We've been at the high end of the street for EBITDA. Um, you know, we're looking at a, a 70, 75% incremental margin this year. We're looking at probably 27% EBITDA margins. We think they're going to get to 30% margins by 23, uh, which could even be conservative. You know, maybe they get there next year, but those are the, some of the puts and takes or some of the bull points from the, the earnings call last night. Yeah, well, one other bull point is just the change in the political winds with regards to the travel restrictions. So Airbnb CEO Brian Chesky noting on last night's uh, earnings call that the Biden administration lifting international travel had a immediate impact on their uh, bookings. Take a listen to what he said on that call yesterday. On October 5th, 15th, I believe it was that date that uh, President Biden announced the reopening of the borders for international travelers coming to the United States. Within one week of that announcement, we saw a 44% spike in nights booked for stays crossing borders coming into the United States on Airbnb for stays um, November 9th and later, which is when the borders would open. So what we are seeing like, kind of across the board is evidence of pent up demand. So obviously that's going to help the company, but I guess the question is you only get that pent up demand released once. You can only lift international travel restrictions once. So is that going to be negative actually for Airbnb when you take a talk about comps in the next quarter or even in the in the quarter uh, equivalent next year? Yeah, I mean, look, I still think that there's massive tailwinds for the company just as travel is changing. Um, we, we've done a few consumer surveys and, and the biggest um, governor on people try are using Airbnb is trying it for the first time. So we, we did a consumer survey in the U.S. Um, where we asked people over the next uh, three to six months, where do you plan on staying for leisure purposes? In the broader populations, 50% uh, said hotels, 25% said Airbnbs. But for those people who had stayed in Airbnb before, it was actually 50% hotels and 50% Airbnb. So that tells us that you know, once consumers try Airbnb or really any alternative accommodation for the first time, they're more likely to use it again. And why that's significant now is that don't, you know, you mentioned, um, kind of international travel coming back. What really took off during the pandemic was shorter trips, uh, increasingly domestic, longer stays and less urban. Um, those were all areas where Airbnb wins and gets them to and gets people to try the service for the first time. So we still think those broader tailwinds are going to be continuing to lift the service as we're talking about a company with a mid single digit share in terms of the total TAM right now. And we think that's going to continue to grow over time. 
Yeah, and that might be one reason why you've got that $210 price target on the stock. Again, right now it's trading about $199.50. But uh, just wondering what you think uh, types of, the different types of bookings play into this long-term stays of 28 days or more uh, actually was their fastest growing category by trip length. They accounted for about 20% of their gross margins in the third quarter. How important are things like that for the growth strategy going forward? Or is that also a pandemic trend? Yeah, it's interesting. If you you know go back to their S1, um, the 28 days or more was one of the categories that was really flat kind of pre-pandemic to post-pandemic or, or during the pandemic, but all the other sorts of travel came down. Um, so it's it's certainly been a net share gainer for them. Um, you know, as urban comes back, as international comes back, I think those are going to be more of the growth drivers and getting back to where they were before. Um, but it does speak to to new use cases. And now to you know, Brian Chesky was talking about last night that this Zoom world that he thinks that we're going to be, you know, staying in. Like you can see, I'm working from home right now. So like, you know, there's no reason why I couldn't be on a three-day weekend out somewhere uh, fun. <laughs> so I think that that's, you know, th they think that the world's kind of increasingly moving there, especially as more corporations embrace a uh, less than five-day work week at the office. All right. Bernie McTurnan, Needham & Company Managing Director. Thanks for breaking down those Airbnb earnings for us. We'll see you again soon.